Hi everyone and um, welcome back to Dudley Central. Uh, it's been a long time since I've done a layout update. Uh, so this is the July update but predominantly covers the last couple of months uh, since I last done one. Um, I've done lots and lots of bits on the layout. I've just not got round to, to filming uh, and editing. Uh, but hopefully in this video you'll see lots of the bits and pieces I've been doing uh, since the last one. And uh, of course, I always welcome uh, your feedback uh, and any suggestions as well. So thanks for watching, and as always, feel free to comment and subscribe. So kicking off at the station end, uh, this area hasn't really changed at all, uh, to be honest. Um, the buildings are as per they were last time. I have added a low relief uh, office building here. Um, just sort of testing that out at the minute to see if it's a good fit if it is I think I'll probably add two or three of those and make a bit of a high street uh, along the back uh, but as it goes for the station itself not a lot has changed I have added overhead uh, line uh, catenary on this platform platform one so I've got one there and one here and those are of course the pico masts and then over here, I have added a siding where the uh, 121 is at the moment. I'm still undecided at the moment whether I will keep this point and have two sidings or have just the one and add another platform, perhaps disused. Uh, be interested to get your uh, opinions on that. The plan is that I will have a retaining wall of sort to block this off and then a ramp which comes down from street level and meets down here where the car park is for the depot so the signal and castle end of the layout uh, is pretty much as it was uh, there really hasn't been much change and as many of you will know uh, those of you who have followed the channel this is the only original board that survived from the uh, previous garage layout. Uh, I really like this. One thing I have added are again the overhead lines uh, to the main lines. So I will have one line here running towards uh, Wolverhampton and the north. And then this line here which will run along the fast electrified lines towards Birmingham New Street uh, and the south. These two lines uh, closer to you uh, will remain unelectrified and just for diesel traction. The other thing I've added uh, for the signal box is I've actually added a light and a uh, little fella in there. Uh, it does need detailing but it's a nice addition uh, to get it lit up. For the castle, uh, as you can see there's a, a Dalek garden at the moment. Um, but what I how what I will do is build up this terrain here, and I'm considering actually extending the castle uh, with some low relief elements. Uh, it will be from the Metcalf range to tie in with the tower. Um, that I think actually that could be quite impressive. So I look forward to having a go at that. But as I say, this 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 section has not had much done to it, and I'm not planning to do much with it uh, right away at the moment. So this board has probably had the most change uh, since the last video and it is of course formerly the DMU depot but it's now expanded uh, to be a locomotive depot as well. So we'll start with the DMU depot. Uh, what I've added is a backman servicing point there and as you can see I've added hard standing uh, between the units. I've had a look at prototype DMU depots and actually this seems fairly prototypical that it's all ballasted and there's just concrete walkways between uh, so I've tried to mimic that as best as I can I've also added just under a this 150 here you can see I've added a Pico inspection pit uh, it's absolutely pristine at the moment so obviously does need weathering um, as does the servicing point and fuel point there as well so there's a lot of blending in 
it's all looking very clean at the moment um, but in terms of layout I'm really quite happy I've also added some floodlights as well uh, just to give it a bit of contrast uh, these are cool white which seems to be fairly normal uh, for this period of time uh, for floodlights uh, but as I say I'm going to add some lights to the servicing point which are probably a different colour and I might also look to add some in the inspection pit as well the washer uh, is also pretty much in the same place um, but I have added hard standing just around the bottom of it just to make it bed itself in a little bit better again I've got another floodlight here um, but I might look to add some lights to the uh, washer itself as uh, again looking at pictures that seems to be quite the norm uh, for these kind of DME washers so what I've gone for is an EWS depot uh, very prototypical of its time uh, EWS became the main um, freight provider in the UK in uh, 1996 I believe uh, when it absorbed all the shadow freight operators so it fits perfectly into my era so um, what I've done is I've added the Backman modern servicing depot but inside I've actually gone uh, a little bit further and added the West Hill Wagon Works interior kit and as you can see what that does is it elevates the rails uh, above the base um, and what I've also gone and done is add lights to the inspection pits as well so when you come from outside it gives a really nice visual effect um, under the under the locos there um, and it's quite good at sort of highlighting the detail I've also on the outside of the depot added uh, some floodlights I've not added one in the middle because um, I didn't feel confident enough to actually hide the wire um, I know that sounds a bit daft but actually I'm quite happy with it how it looks at the minute um, so that, that's probably what I'm going to do as you can see I've also added all these sort of depot uh, signage as you'd uh, come to expect if you just come round to this side here I've also added a siding just to the side of a depot where the uh, class 58 is at the moment um, I think this is just quite a nice little point uh, just to photograph models really against that wall um, yeah so in front of a depot now uh, I've essentially copied the DMU depot I've added a fuel uh, point for the diesel locomotives uh, as you can see I've got the back and fueling points uh, which we've, we've had around for a good few years now uh, and then I've added the Backman pump house but I've also added the West Hill Wagon Works diesel tanks uh, I went for these because they were significantly cheaper than Backman's offerings uh, I just need to paint them up and fit them in so coming along now um, this road track runs all the way along because the idea is that this uh, little depot building here serves the EWS part of the depot now I should have said that these two facilities in essence now post privatization two separate things you've got the freight locomotive depot and the DMU depot now for the DMU depot there is actually this mess room here which as you can see still got the regional railways branding which uh, lasted well into the mid 2000s uh, so I've left that there and the idea is that staff using this office are probably going to be working on the DMUs whereas if you're working in the EWS depot you will come to here so for the EWS setup I've also added a little site cabin um, and then it's just all the various gubbins that I've picked up so I've got some spare wheels, buckets, pallets, uh, ploughs and a whole manner of stuff I will look to add a few more perhaps some power units as well um, but I've really enjoyed putting this together um, I've had a lot of fun making the depot um, it's one thing I was always a bit hesitant about doing 
um, but I'm, I'm really glad I have. It's obviously very clean at the moment and my next attention on it will be to, to um, make it nice and dirty and grubby it up. The last thing really of note is I'm thinking of having some on track plants sort of stationed here. Um, I've got some rope, I've got an RRV there and, that, and then I've just got the Stobart excavator as well. Now just to the back of the scene now, uh, you can see I've got a train on one of the main lines uh, heading north. Now behind it is a siding. Now the plan is that that siding is only to be used by electric traction. So that'll be electrified and it will be really for where class 90s and class 92s park up. Um, it will be sort of multi-use, it will be for the uh, EWS uh, guys over here but also uh, for passenger uh, electric locomotives which have come from the station and swapped uh, for diesel uh, locomotives so it can run in there and it can actually access uh, either of the electrified lines from that siding uh, so again I just wanted something to park it up um, and again just for a bit of operational interest now as we look towards the junction um, it's actually quite complex really the amount of different routes uh, trains can take um, but as you can see this what we're looking at here is the branch line uh, or secondary route which diesel trains take uh, towards the station and then over to right is the electrified uh, main lines and they converge there uh, and head towards the station now I've Gone, ahead, gone away now I've wired it all up and I've now added this valley uh, going down towards here what I've done at the back is I've used a Metcalf uh, low relief warehouse uh, which I think fits the scene well um, I'll also look to add a few more low relief items along that back scene just to give it a bit more depth um, but I really love uh, photographing this uh, scene uh, or indeed videoing as well the other thing I've added to here are some train tech sensor signals uh, as you can see um, they're automatic and they run through the different aspects uh, really really cool really impressed with those I've wired them to my um, bus wire uh, underneath I've took the connectors off them um, I've got three of them at the minute. I've got a three aspect one here with a feather left, and that's if trains want to switch from the electrified lines to the diesel. I've got a four aspect one here, um, which is mainly due to it going off into the distance, um, so that that's kind of normal to have a distant four aspect. And then over here, I've got another signal. Uh, which is a free aspect feather right now at the moment I've not detailed this one up or painted it um, I do find that they can be significantly improved if you paint them grey uh, on the back and around add a concrete base to it as well uh, and paint the front black uh, because I do think they come out quite toy like uh, out of the package once you detail them up they do look fantastic uh, and they work really really well so now coming over to this end um, I've now as you can see bedded the viaduct in again that's one of the original parts of the old layout I couldn't bring myself to throw that away um, compared to the Metcalf viaduct to get out the box I've actually shortened well reduced the height of it so you can see it's lower down um, that was so that it looked a bit more uh, bedded in in this environment. I've also added a, a tunnel portal as well, and that is the Hornby Magazine uh, laser cut portal. Uh, I absolutely love that to be honest, and I had a lot of fun um, painting it. Um, I've used various different tones and colours uh, to get that sort of look out of it. Um, it's still not quite finished, there's, there's a few bits that need doing. Uh, but overall that I really like 
how that scene has come out with the viaduct leading to the tunnel. The plan underneath is that the road uh, will split something like that. Um, the main there's two reasons for that really. So, firstly, I don't think now I'm a I'm a bridge engineer, not a, a road engineer, but if you had two vehicles like that in there. I don't think you could fit a say a, a footpath through there or, or something like that. It looks too narrow to me that viaduct uh, for that. So what I am going to do, uh, which which is done in reality, is I'm going to have one line of traffic going one way through an arch and one coming out the other. Now what that also does for me is it opens up the opportunity to run a fallow car around and back under. And you won't see it did it did a turn on the other side i'm going to try and mask that somehow um that is something i really fancy doing on this layout adding the fallow road system for this arch here i'm thinking of putting a canal um i always like putting canals on my layouts um so this one's going to be no difference and i think it should look quite nice uh, like that now coming to this side i'm thinking i'm going to add another embankment i was really really wanting this part to look with the tracks um elevated because i think when you do a big tmd like that and a station it can all look very flat um so i wanted to add more sort of natural contours in here uh, so again i think i'll probably put a bank on this side uh, just to bed it all in and then looking this way again towards the tunnel, I've now got a slope which uh, comes up from this level here up to the top and then beds in with the tunnel. I really wanted something like that so that you kind of, when you're watching trains here, the main line starts to look quite distant. So I wanted that sort of separation and then it also gives me the opportunity to make it look like a two track layout then uh, separately like so at the top i've got no idea what i'm doing up here um, i've added the crooked house which uh, famously uh, is from dudley and tragically got burnt down um i had to have a model of that so that will feature up there somewhere uh, as i said the fallow car system is something that's also high on the list and then it gets a bit messy over this side, uh, but ultimately I'm thinking of having the bus garage up here somewhere. So that's the plan. It's getting there. So that wraps about up the uh, the update. There's loads and loads of stuff being up to, and apologies, I've just not got around to videoing it. Um, but again, I'd, I'd love to hear what you guys think, and if you've got any other ideas for me. Um, as I say, feel free to, to follow my Instagram feed. I, I tend to update that more these days uh, than my YouTube, so you'll get more regular updates on the layout. Um, but I'll, I'll, I will try and get better at putting some more YouTube videos up. As always, uh, feel free uh, to comment and subscribe, and thanks again for stopping by. Bye for now.